how nice it is to get back out onto the court. <laughs> I feel like the genie right now. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you guys didn't know, we're here in beautiful southern sunny California. And I hope you guys are doing well. But in today's video, we're going to be going over seven drills that you can do on or off the court that's going to boost your serve speed up at least 20 miles per hour and get your serve looking like this. So let's dive right in. Okay, let's kick things off with drill number one, resisted oblique crunch. This is one of my favorite drills of all time that I work with my students on, especially when they have a problem over rotating. And if this is one of you guys, if you have a problem rotating in too much, I got you. So typically what happens when you stand up to the baseline and you're trying to serve the ball really hard, what, what happens in the, your, your brain, you think, rotate in, rotate in, because I wanna drive the ball with a lot of force. And while that is partially true, that rotational force does help to build racket head speed, it has to be assisted with a second motion. When I'm crunching my left oblique muscle, take a look at what happens with my right shoulder. It drives up. And this is exactly the motion that happens on the highest level servers. What you'll notice is that their hitting shoulder starts from a lower position to a higher position, almost like they're performing this cartwheel motion. A little known fact is that this actually helps to drive the racket head down and build that racket head speed up to contact. So in order to get a feel for this motion, we're gonna get a resistance band. I have one conveniently placed right here. You're just gonna step on it with your back foot Get in the serve stance just like this. Make sure to have enough resistance here and I'll explain why in a bit. Let's start in the trophy position with your right shoulder lowered about 45 to 55 degrees just like this. And what you're gonna do slowly, you're gonna pull this, you're gonna crunch this left oblique muscle here just like that. You wanna feel a tenseness in this specific region of your abdominals as you drive this shoulder upwards. So what you'll notice is this shoulder starts to go up as the left shoulder shoulder starts to drop. And where I'll end up is lean forward in this optimal contact position, just like this. And what you can start to do once you get comfortable with that motion is you can start to incorporate explosiveness into the shot, just like this. And then adjust the resistance band for more or less resistance as per your feel. All right, next up for drill number two, we're gonna focus on some resisted shadow swings. So this is pretty straightforward. All you need is a racket with a cover on it. If you don't have one of these, a uh, plastic bag will do the trick as well. All you're gonna do here is start in your trophy pose again. You don't need a launch. You're just gonna focus on some light shadow swings just like this. And what you'll notice is that with a little bit of cover like this, you're gonna feel a little bit more resistance when you're swinging the shot. And we talked about this in our last video. If you wanna check it out, link down in the description. But this is gonna create a little bit more of a drag in your swing, in your racket, while you're swinging. And this is specifically useful because have you ever tried picking something up that's really heavy, right? And then right after you pick something up that was like really light and it felt like you were picking up a feather, right? So our goal with this shadow swing here is so that by the time you take the cover off, you're gonna be swinging like you're swinging a feather. All right, we're at drill number three. You guys are doing a great job. So remember the first drill we worked on, this time, along with the core rotation that we talked about, this left oblique crunch. Now we're gonna get a medicine ball and focus on coordinating the launch, that leg drive motion with that crunch. So all you need is a four to eight pound medicine ball. This is a six pound right here. And all you're gonna do is get into that trophy position again, just like this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna push this shoulder up while at the same time coordinating the leg drive, just like this. All you need to focus on here, you don't have to throw it high or hard or anything right now, you're just focusing on coordinating. So think launch and drive that shoulder up. Here, launch and drive, boom. Now as you get more coordinated and comfortable, you can start focusing on throwing it higher and focusing on how you land. Eventually, it'll start looking like this. Now, before I get out of breath here, uh, if you guys want to, if you have a partner with you, you can work on this with a partner just by throwing it back and forth. Again, don't focus on depth, focus on height. 
All right, for drill number four, we're gonna be using one of the most common household items out there. I'm sure you could find it scoured around your home somewhere. It, yep, it's the pairless sock, the spare pairless sock that you have lying around somewhere. We're finally gonna put it to use. <laughs> Okay, so all we need here is two balls just to add a little bit of weight into the sock. Okay, just like that. So all you need to do again to start here is to get into your surf stance and start your backswing and forward swing just like this. Backswing, forward swing. Now one of the best parts about using a sock is that it really helps to coordinate your backswing with your forward swing. Specifically for players who have a problem starting their acceleration either here where they're opened up or even worse, from this back scratch position just like here. If I start from here, it's much more difficult for me to generate that racketed speed because I'm starting my acceleration much later. Compare this to if I were to start here, allowing myself ample enough distance to rotate down and back, taking my racket diagonally down and back to build that racketed speed. So this drill is gonna be perfect for getting a sense of the rhythm of how you're gonna start integrating the back swing the arm fluidity and the coordination of your shot, just like this. Now, a quick tip here is to make sure, as you can see here, I'm making sure to rotate my body away and in so that I can still make sure that my racket head is going in the right trajectory. What happens if you don't use the torso is, again, my sock is gonna go right behind my back and that's not a position that I wanna be in for the serve. Instead, I wanna flip it down and back by rotating away and making sure to get the right motions in my core before rotating in. So by now we have a lot more fluidity in the arm action. We know how to crunch our oblique muscles. We know exactly how to coordinate our leg drive with the torso rotation. Now we're gonna focus on a little bit of that crucial contact point. One of the best drills for focusing on getting an accurate contact position is instead of using the racket, use your hand to actually catch the ball. Now this is actually really accurate because I want you to start thinking of hitting your shots. Instead of hitting, instead of aiming for, for a target, I want you to almost think of it like catching the ball with the racket. Now that might sound a little bit woo woo. Bruce Lee said this quote, and I, I'm gonna butcher it a little bit, but he basically said, the hands do the hitting and you are merely the observer. All right, so having said that, we're gonna do a drill that I like to call toss and catch. Now for this, all you're gonna do is toss the ball and catch it, just like this. Toss, catch. Now what you're gonna start to notice is your body's gonna start to automatically coordinate as far as your timing of your backswing and your body position at contact. Now, if you guys do want me to make a contact position video specifically on the serve, then definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to make a video. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon below to get notified of our upcoming videos soon. So once you get comfortable with tossing and catching and you're not missing as much and you're getting coordinated with the ball just like this, Next, we're gonna move on to the contact and extension. So all you need for this drill is a stringless racket. So if you have a spare racket at home, you can cut the strings up and you'll do just fine, just like this. So this is a really popular drill, but I like to call it through the ringer and I'll show you why. So all you need for this drill is to start out with a couple of balls in one hand and with your hitting hand, just hold your stringless racket in front of your body like this so that you can focus on isolating this pronation supination motion. That's when the palm is going up to down. Now you're gonna go here and toss the ball and try and get it through the racket frame, just like this, boom. So all you're doing is focusing and really visualizing hitting contact, which is exactly what you're gonna be doing when you serve the ball. As you, as you can notice, my hand and my arm is rotating outward, just like this, almost like you're visualizing hitting outward instead of forward. So we're getting used to that pronation motion by rotating this in. So next, once you're comfortable with that, all you're gonna do is get into your serve stance, and this time, you're gonna focus on tossing the ball, and starting from the trophy pose, focus on swinging through, just like this. <laughs> Don't worry if it hits you, it won't be that hard. Here we go, straight through, just like that. And this is gonna get you to focus on your toss as well. Make sure that your toss, as you can see, is going in an arc to your left-hand side, as well as in front of your body. 
So if you wanna make this fun and add a little bit of a challenge, all you need here is a bucket of balls and all you're gonna do is place it about in front of the baseline, a couple of inches in front of the imaginary baseline and try and make it align with your left hand side of your left shoulder here, just like this, so that you're tossing in the right arc. Now, from, from the trophy position again, you're gonna to toss and try to get it into the bucket while at the same time trying to get the frame through the ball. So you're gonna focus on toss and contact. Here we go. Ooh, that was close. Here, through, boom. Boom. Second try. <laughs> All right, guys, we're here at last. Drill number seven, you made it and congrats. So for this last drill, I'm gonna keep it easy, but it's gonna burn and you're gonna love it. So we're gonna be focusing specifically on this internal and external rotation. What is called the long axis rotation, where along with the pronation, you're gonna focus on internally rotating, just like this, this hand and arm so that your racket is pointed outward by the time you hit the shot. So in order to work that in, we're gonna be isolating the internal and external rotation that's responsible for driving that racket back and forward. Along with strengthening this part of the muscle, it's really gonna help you prevent any injury that's gonna come with trying to externally and internally rotate as you start to develop more power into your shot. So let's get started by grabbing a resistance band and all you're gonna need is a pole to hold that resistance band. Okay, so as you can see, I don't have any pole around me, so I'm gonna have to get creative here. I'm gonna use my human pole, Daytree. All right, now I have Daytree, the human pole. All right, Daytree, say hi. Okay, good, <laughs> he's in character, I guess. Okay, so what we're gonna focus on is that internal shoulder rotation just like this, right? So you can have as much resistance as you need here, as you're comfortable with. Make sure that your joints are stable just like this, right? Good. And then once you're comfortable with that. <laughs> okay, so once you're comfortable with this internal rotation motion here, you're gonna switch to the other side. And this side is naturally gonna be weaker because you're working on your back muscles and your, your rotator cuff externally. And so you don't have the support of the chest muscles here. So you can just grab one resistance band here and you're gonna externally rotate to about a little bit beyond 90 degrees, just like that. You don't need to go too far back here just because you're working on strengthening. So here, and really make sure that your elbow isn't moving away or moving forward through the shot. All right, thanks Daytree. Now, if you really wanna get true transformation from these drills and make these techniques last for when you're back on the court, instead of getting rusty the next time you step back onto the court, well, you're gonna need a solid training system to get there. And luckily, that's exactly what we've designed here in our brand new course, home court advantage. It's our absolute best work yet. And in our serve module, we cover very crucial techniques like the three core motions, the exact way to release the ball in order to get it in a reliable spot, and the perfect contact position that's optimized for hitting the ball on a dime every time, even if you're under pressure. So if you wanna check out our best videos on the serve, as well as drills that accompany it, then you can check it out completely free of cost by clicking the first link in the description below. This is just our way of saying thank you from the bottom of my heart for sticking with us through these times. And I wish you the best of luck and go out and train hard. See you in the next video. Okay, he's in character right now. <laughs> through the shot. All right, thanks Daytree. All right, now you're gonna disappear. Ha 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 ha!